Hey, hi there. This is Eric Silvey, also known as a Z Power Diver. Today, I wanted to talk with you about the differences between Parallax cards and adaptive cards. Based on the recent presentations I've done in at uh, Dynamics Con and Dynamics Minds, uh, some of the feedback that I've received was positive around the uh, explanation I've done uh, between uh, for the differences between the two of them. So uh, I'll do a brief uh, summary of that and I uh, hope it helps you uh, understand the differences and the scenarios into which Parox cards uh, make sense. So um, here I have an example of a Parox card. I'm in Teams. Uh, I receive in a uh, channel or in a, in a chat, I receive a card, which is something I need to take action on. And for example, here it's a pull request. Uh, on a car model, so I can go and select which car model I uh, I can use or I prefer in this case, sorry, and then select my choice. But as you see, these are check boxes. This is with a Parax cards, and like the width of the card is uh, as large as the messages and so on. When we compare this with a an adapt adaptive card like this one, so this is the same kind of a uh, poll request for the preferred car model using adaptive cards. You see like it's more, uh, it's like slim, uh, takes much, uh, less uh, screen estate. Um, and I do have radio buttons in this case. So really like I select one single model and then be able to submit this. So this is like one of the differences. So both of them, you get them in a, you can get them in a Teams chat or channel. Uh, push them out, though for uh, adaptive cards, the beauty for those is they can be sent out into different kind of channels, not just in Teams. It's a pretty uh, um, standardized and portable model, so they can be distributed in other areas than Teams. Now, in terms of the experience to build those cards, that's where some of the key differences are. So, for example, an adaptive card, if I go into Flow, that uh, uses the adaptive card. So this one here, uh, you know, very simple flow, and you can get templates uh, from uh, the PowerMate template library that use those cards, so you can get some uh, some information there. But you know, basically, uh, I start a flow based on you know X Y Z in this case manual trigger, and then I post the adaptive card and wait for a response. So I say, okay, how do I want to push this out? And where do I want to post this in the channel? And then here's where it becomes, you know, more tricky. Um, you need to have like a full explanation in JSON format of what the uh, card is about. So, you know, I need to know where I'm going here. Uh, you know, a few helpers there left and right, but really like uh, I need to know what I'm doing here to build this whole JSON format and submit this. And then, you know, say into which team and channel do I send this. Now, the nice thing here is, as you can see, post adaptive card and wait for a response. So I'm sending out this card, I wait for the response, and then I can do something based on the, that response. So I, in this case, I can send an email using the response that was provided and send it back to someone. So that's with the adaptive card. So a bit, more work to build the card, but uh, if I'm a scenario where I need to act on the uh, response that was provided, it works out well because I have a post adaptive card and wait for a response action that is available in Teams. What about the uh, card for Power App? So, two things. One, uh, we'll look at the flow, but in terms of editing, so building the equivalent of the card. I do have, you know, looks very similar to the uh, Canvas Studio here. So I do have a studio to build my card in a low code fashion. So, you know, I select like, what do I display? What kind of inputs do I use? So like checkbox, things like that. Uh, I can put the buttons and then, you know, what do I do when I do this and so on and so forth. It's much more limited than Canvas apps are, but it's very low code. Uh, oriented, local, no code type of oriented. You know, I can do a bit power effects here and there. And really, like, 
in the background, what happens is it does generate a uh, JSON. Well, oh, can't move my camera, but it does generate like a JSON that you could go and edit, but like then, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of using this local platform to build it. So once it's, um, it's generated, I can test it out just like a Canvas app and so on. But uh, in most scenario, you want to automate this. So if we come back to the Power Automate flow here, it's the same kind of thing, manually trigger it. I create the card instance. So pretty much what I do here is I select the, uh, the card that I created, and then I post card in chat or channel, not post card and wait. In this case, I post it and boom, it's gone. I don't, I cannot take action afterwards. Even though, if you played around with cards, even though you can have <clears throat> variables that, in this case, you know, for example, the provided answer that I can say, you know what, allow the value to be returned to flow or bot. Yeah, great, awesome. Thank you for providing this, Microsoft. But right now, as we speak, uh, June 5th, uh, 2024. Right now, this does, it's not used because, again, the action is simply post a card in the chat or channel. So, when I have this, like, why, what's the benefit of using a card? Well, first, the creation of it is uh, simpler, uh, though I do have limitations. So, like I say, I cannot wait for it. The other thing is, I don't have radio buttons in this case versus the adaptive part. But the real value in scenarios where cards for perhaps do have a much greater benefit than adaptive cards is the ability to include data sources such as Dataverse. So I could have a scenario where I present in my card data coming from Dataverse and also can update back this information or create information in Dataverse. I get the full uh you know create read update you know functionalities uh, patch uh capabilities through power effects into dataverse so i can have scenarios where i present this card with information coming from dataverse and update back dataverse all that in teams all that in an actionable area and the nice thing is it does recognize me as a user so when i'm consuming this card it provides with all the per it goes with all the permissions and privileges that are based on my user. So if I do have the rights to read this record that I'm presenting, it's good. If I have the rights to update it, it's good. If not, I will get an error message saying, you know what, you don't have the rights for this. Please contact your administrator. Type of thing. So that's where um, Power Apps cards do uh, make a big Different. So, as a big, as a recap, oh, let me just show you the slide that I presented at uh, Dynamics Minds and also another version at the Dynamics Con. So, Power Apps cards, we get the low code uh, card studio experience. In adaptive cards, I get the pro code, pro code style because I have to write the whole JSON. Power Apps card, there is no output directly in Power Automate that is available. Even though do we have allow value to be returned to flow, but can be used for now. Wait for response. Output can be used in other flow actions. So I can send out an email with the answer and so on. So it's good for static type of scenarios. Perhaps cards, you get the value of the universe. That's quite a difference. Adaptive cards, you do have radio buttons for single op choice options. Yeah, strange, but Perhaps cards, you only have checkboxes, uh, no single options available. Uh, Perhaps cards, you share them in Teams. Adaptive cards are uh, available through multiple applications. So, uh, quick run through. I hope uh, this was useful to understand the different scenarios. Uh, in the next rounds, I'll go more in details of what how to create Perhaps cards. Have a good one.